and sister. All right, good evening. Good evening. Hope everybody's had a, had a good week so far. And it's good to be in God's house tonight. Oh, um, got, a, got a few going to pile in here in just a minute. That's we'll go ahead and get started. A uh, little different change of scenery. Uh, we got several working the team kids this time, and they they want to be able to access uh, Bible study. So we're going to uh, be up here. So there's a mic. And uh, so anyways, that's, that's kind of why I'm up here. It's a little different scenery, but that's okay. So if y'all want to spread back out, that'll be fine too. I feel like we're leaning this way. Anyways, hope you had a good week. Uh, it's good to be here tonight. Uh, we'll start with prayer requests tonight. others tonight. Got unspoken. Any other unspoken tonight? Several unspoken. So uh, we will have a word of prayer and we will get started. Lord, we thank you uh, for this opportunity, God, to come to your house tonight. Father, we thank you for each one that's here. Uh, God, I just uh, I, I just praise you for them, God, and I just thank you for what they mean to me and to my family and to this church, God. And I ask you that you just bless uh, each one that's here, God, for their efforts for being here. Uh, God, we uh, thank you for all the kids that are here tonight. And we thank you for a great turnout for that, Father. We, we pray especially for those that are going to be leading the the team kids this time, those that are going to be teaching classes and, and doing rec and, and any hand that they have in it, oh God, I pray that you would help them to be a light uh, to these children. And uh, God, I pray that the children would, would uh, clearly, God, hear the gospel. And uh, and God, I just thank you for the seeds that's going to be planted. And God, I pray that you would just water those. So God, we just thank you for that. God, we thank you for, uh, uh, God, that you're a God that we can call out to, God, we can pray to. So God, we lift each prayer request that was mentioned tonight to you. And God, we lift them up. God, I ask you to touch and bless and heal and restore as only you can. God, I pray that you would give hope and peace. And uh, God, we're just going to give you all the glory for that. Father, again, we thank you for the uh, opportunity to be here. We thank you for your word. God, I pray tonight that we would read it, we'd understand it, and we'd apply it to our lives that we may better serve you. God, again, we thank you again for all that you've done. Most of all, for Jesus. And it's in his name that I pray. Amen. 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 All right, if you got your Bibles tonight, it's Exodus chapter number 8. Exodus chapter number 8. While you're turning there, I do want to thank David and Pam again for putting on the senior lunch today. Had a great time uh, with those folks, and I told them I wouldn't put them in any category that they could put themselves in whatever category they wanted to, so. Uh, I'm not going to say I hung out with old folks. I'm just going to say I hung out with folks. So, But uh, we had a good time. Appreciate them putting that on. Uh, also, an announcement that I forgot to say. Uh, a while back, Darby asked if anybody wanted any of the guest 
Vacation Bible School's church. There were several that I asked, and nobody ever said anything to her. And then the past couple of weeks, I think there's been a few that, that's asked about that. So there's a sign-up sheet out front. Uh, probably leave that out for a week or so. So if, if you didn't get a Bible School shirt or want another Bible School shirt, uh, I think Miss Crystal's got it on. It's the blue. Got the guest on the front with a verse on the back. Uh, we are going to be taking another order of those. And I, I don't know how much they were or anything like that. But anyway, sign-up sheet out front for that. Uh, Exodus chapter number eight. Uh, last week, when we uh, when we let loose, uh, we had just talked about the first plague that had happened, and we understand why the plagues are happening. Uh, that God is trying to uh, get the children of Israel out of Egypt, right? They're in bondage, and uh, and and so God has appealed to Pharaoh through Moses and Aaron, and he did not heed their warning. The Bible says his heart was hardened, and uh, so. God pretty much says I'm going to get his attention through a series of plagues. And so last week we talked about the first plague. Who remembers the first plague we talked about? Yeah, the return of the Nile into, into blood. And uh, and how it changed and transformed their way of life. Remember it lasted for seven days. And like that just that just wrecked everything that went on in, uh, in Egypt there for, for seven days. Uh, but the Bible says that when, when Moses and Aaron did that, remember what happened? That is, magicians were able to kind of replicate that, and so Pharaoh didn't read much into it. Uh, but we did talk about the fact that his magicians uh, could not turn the water back into, or turn the, the blood back into water. We talked about that, that and we, we kind of tied that in how Satan has some power, but God has all power, right? And so we're going to kind of see some more of that tonight, starting uh, here in chapter number 8. So we talked about the first plague, get into the second plague. Verse number one, uh, I never entitle Bible studies. Like I always try to put a title on a sermon. Just It helps me to remember kind of when I preach, where I preach or whatnot. Uh, but I, I never really did that to a Bible study until tonight. And I was, I was kind of going over my notes today, and, and, and I just entitled it Frogs and Flies for some reason. So uh, if you want to write that in your notes, Frogs and Flies. Uh, verse number eight, or I'm sorry, chapter eight, verse number one. And the Lord spake to Moses, and go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. So he went to him, and he refused it a couple times now. And, and But the message is the same that Moses that God gives Moses to give Pharaoh. Let my people out of here. Okay? They're not your possession. They're mine. Let them go. And Pharaoh responds uh, the same way. If thou... If thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thy house and into thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thine ovens and into the kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come upon both thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. Does anybody else's kids have a fascination with frogs? My kids, Sydney is, uh, you'd think with, with two older brothers living on the farm, and she'd be like a tomboy farm girl, you know. She's not. She's she's all about painting her toenails and fingers. She's just, she's just a sassy little girl until it comes to frogs. And I don't know what it is about our house, but we, we're blessed with frogs at the house. Okay? Not, not necessarily this much, uh, as we're talking about tonight, but, but we've got a lot of her. And she'll catch them. And she'll put them in her pockets, and she'll bring them to you and give them to you. And it's just kind of precious, but it's kind of gross at the same. I like frogs, okay? I did a lot of frog gigging. Uh, but, but she loves frogs. Jack loves frogs. Uh, and they just have a fascination with frogs. But as we read tonight, this is not just a, a normal few frogs on your patio back there. It said that he's going to bombard them with frogs. And it's kind of, it's kind of gross, uh, if, if, if you will. Uh, if you remember last week, we talked about that each one of the plagues had something to do with a deity that had to do with Egypt. Y'all remember that? We talked about the Nile River, how their god, uh, the, the god of the Nile was that guy named Happy. And remember, he was, he was a short, fat god. I spoke wrong last week. I said that he had the breast of a, wimp, a woman, and it was three of his not. I, I read that wrong, and I went back. I don't apologize about that. But he, but he, he was a short, fat guy with the breast of a woman. And, but the thing about him that we didn't talk about is he's actually holding a frog in his hand. He's holding a frog in his hand. And they had a, a goddess, a female deity that they called, uh, and her name was Heka. 
And she was a goddess, uh, a patroness of the midwives, and, and she, they, they thought that she was a, uh, a helper also in fertility and, and rebirth and stuff along those lines. So they actually, frogs were sacred in Egypt. And so just like God attacked the Nile River, attacked one of their deities, God is now attacking this deity as well. And here's the deal about these frogs, is I guess if your house gets infested, anybody ever had like an infestation of something in your house? Nobody wants to admit to it because that's great. But we, we all have, right? Whether it's ants or something like that. What do you do to them? You don't just let them hang out. You kill them, right? You get rid of them. Well, seeing that the frogs are sacred, and we're going to get to another one here in a minute, the frogs are sacred, they can't kill them. They can't do nothing with them. They're just there. It's sacred to them, and, and it's kind of gross. And it says that they're not only going to be uh, you know, outside, they're going to be everywhere. They're going to consume them. So what was a blessing to them, they thought their God ends up being a curse to them. Uh, it says, And the frogs shall come, verse number four, And the frogs shall come up, up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, over the ponds, and cause frogs to come upon the land of Egypt. We talked about, if you remember when we ended last week, we talked about the confidence that Moses and Aaron must have been gained. When God says that he's going to do something and he sends Moses and Aaron to do it, God's been fulfilling what he said he's going to do. So when he goes out here this time to stick his rod over the Nile and the frogs to come out, I bet he does it with a lot more confidence than he had before. Okay, so he goes and exactly what God says will happen, happened. Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. So the same thing kind of happens. They're, they're able to replicate what goes on. Verse number 8. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. Okay, so here we go. We get Pharaoh on the second plague already. Pharaoh's getting a little bit fed up with this. And he says... The image of the goddess. Yes. Head of a prop. That's right. And uh, so, once again, he's attacking that, that image. And uh, he says, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people. I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. Okay, so Pharaoh's saying, look, I've, I've had enough of the frogs, okay? Apparently, he's told his magicians to do like he told them on the Nile, I'm sure. Hey, y'all brought the frogs here, why don't you get rid of them? Apparently, they can't do it. So he goes to Moses, and he enticed him. He said, hey, tell God to, to get rid of the frogs, and I'll let the people go worship. I'll let them go sacrifice, whatever whatever needs to happen. Pharaoh starts to strike a deal with him, okay? Moses said to Pharaoh, and, and so Moses gets a little tricky here, not tricky, but clever in what he says, and he says to Pharaoh, glory over me. Or he says pretty much, uh, you tell me when you want this to happen. Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses that they may remain in the river only. So if they just died all of a sudden, like Pharaoh don't know if it was God or not God, right? But Moses says, hey, why don't you tell me when, when to tell God when you want the frogs go. So you'll know. Right? So look what happens. He said, uh, so Pharaoh said, verse number 10, he said, tomorrow, and he said, be it according to thy word that thou mayest know that there is none like the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee and from thy houses and from thy servants and from thy people and they shall remain in the river only. And Moses said to Aaron, or I'm sorry, and Moses went out from Pharaoh and cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. So Moses, like, instead of getting this from God, God said, hey, tell him, tell him to pick a time. Moses just said, like, you can see the confidence he's gaining. I tell you what, Pharaoh, won't you just tell me when to tell God to do it? And, like, I almost see Moses freaking out a little bit right here in verse number 12. The Bible says that he went and he cried out to the Lord, Lord, you've got to come through. I done went flapping my gums and I done went bragging on you about how good and how powerful and how on time you are. And, and, and God, you've got to come through. You've got to come through. So it says, Moses went out from the Lord, cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died 
out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together unto heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. So just as Moses told Pharaoh, tell me when, he said tomorrow, Moses went and cried out to God, God drops him there the next day. And the Bible says that they, they, they were everywhere. So they pushed them out and made big piles. And we talked about last week about how the Nile, all the fish died in the Nile, and there's nothing that stinks worse than a dead fish, probably except a heaping pile of dead frogs. All right? That's not a pleasant thing in Egypt. Egypt is known for this beauty and known for its wealth and known for all it, and now they got dead frogs everywhere. Okay. And uh, they gathered them together heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Pharaoh didn't keep his end of the deal up. Do we expect anything less from Pharaoh at this point? He didn't keep his end of the deal up. I, I want us to, un me to help me understand here, I guess, that, that God, I believe in, in the midst of all these plagues, I also think that God in his mercy and grace is giving Pharaoh time to repent. At any time, I think Pharaoh could have said, you know what, after this, seeing that God moved or right on time when he said he was going to move, you know what, I do believe that your God is the God of heaven, the one supreme God. And I, do, I believe he's given them a chance to repent, and Pharaoh just don't do it. I think a lot of times we can point fingers at Pharaoh and all that, but I think a lot of times there, there, there's maybe God gives us warning signs in our life of sin that's maybe there that we don't want to do nothing with. And before you know it, what, what does sin always lead to? What do we always talk about? Always leads to destruction, right? And we never heed the warnings and we never repent of it. And before long, something happens. And well, why did that? Well, the sin in your life. There was no repentance. He's given Pharaoh a chance to repent. And the Bible says that he didn't. I want us to look at verse 15. Previously, God said that he was going to harden Pharaoh's heart. We talked about what that meant, that God was going to twist and see what was in God in, in Pharaoh's heart. He was going to, whatever was in there, he was going to get it out, right? I want us to look in 15 right here that God don't have to harden Pharaoh's heart no more. Pharaoh hardens his own heart. Woe be unto us when we get to that point where we harden our own heart. Amen. And what's so sad is we live in, in amongst of a lot of people today, man, that they don't want nothing to do with God. They don't do nothing, want nothing to do with being saved and salvation. And their heart is hardened towards the gospel and it's hardened towards the church. And it's a scary time. And I, I think one of the reasons that their hearts may be hardened towards the church and towards God is because of how people in the church act. Right. I believe we become stumbling blocks sometimes. God forbid that we ever become a stumbling block. God forbid that we are ever the reason that somebody hardens their heart towards the gospel and towards the church. Amen. God forbid. The Bible says when Pharaoh was there, or when he saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. So any questions or comments on the frogs? Moving on to the plague of the lice. If you have a different translation other than the King James, it may say gnats or it may say something along those lines. So we'll read verses 16 through 19 and we'll kind of break it down. The Bible says, And the Lord said to Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all of the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the... You think Aaron's excited at this point waiting on God and saying, what can I do with his rod now? You know what I'm saying? What can I do next? Aaron's like, oh yeah, smite the dust. Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. It became lice in man and in beast, and all the dust of the land became lice throughout the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could... So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This, listen to this, these people are against God. These are witchcraft workers. They're, they're against the deity of God. And listen to what they say to Pharaoh. This is how hard Pharaoh's heart is. The magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. So the previous two... <coughs> plagues, the first two, he had gave a warning. 
let my people go, or this is going to happen. Let my people go, or this is going to happen. This time, there's no warning. God says to Moses, he says, tell Aaron to smite the dust to the ground. And there's going to be light set for you. And just well, like what we talked about, Aaron, Aaron did. When you talk about these lies right here, if you look at that word in its, in, it, in its root form, it means to nip or to cover or to pinch. And so some say this is gnats, and some say it's mosquitoes, and some say it's lice. And, and some of the commentary I was reading, they, they really lean towards the lice. Lice is kind of prominent over in that land anyway. And, uh, and so they were kind of be familiar with this. And what the lice would do, it would, it, they were like uh, scavengers, if you would. And so this was, uh, it was kind of a curse and a blood. Cause who wants lice crawling all over? You know what I mean? No, we, we ain't a big fan of that. Uh, but they were scavengers. And we've got piles of dead frogs everywhere. Uh, so it's kind of a curse and a blessing. I guess they gonna, I guess there's going to be lice on the frogs as well. To maybe, maybe devour those. I don't know. Anyways, there's lice. Some kind of insect. I, I think it's lice myself. Uh, you say, well, what kind of God is this attacking in the land of Egypt? Well, if you look, Geb was the earth god, or the god of the dirt, or god of the dust. And so this Geb was supposed to be able to control things along that nature, and Aaron sticks his rod out and says, here's the lice out of the dust of the ground. It, it attacked what they thought was in control of the earth. God's just attacking deity after deity, after what they think is deity after deity after deity, proving that he is one true sovereign God over it all. So they did uh, stretch out their rods, smite the dust of the land. It may become lies throughout the land of Egypt. We talked about that. Air stretched forth his hand. It happened. Uh, that was lost in man and in beast, and all the dust of the land became lost throughout the land of Egypt. The magicians did so. Now they've been able to do some pretty incredible things. Let's just let's just be honest. They they turned water to blood. They made frogs come out of the Nile River. Whether they did it by trickery, whether they did it by witchcraft, well, I don't know how they did it. Uh, I, you watch these magicians on TV. I don't know how they do a lot of that stuff. It's kind of neat for me to watch. It. I don't know how these dudes were doing it, but they did. And they were able to fulfill it. Well, Pharaoh went to them and said, hey, make this happen. They did so with their enchantments to bring forth lies, but they could not. So they were lies upon man and upon beast. God is taking their deities, throwing them in the ground, stomping all over them, and saying, I'm the one true God. The magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. We're talking about folks that has been taught their whole life that there is no God. We're talking about people that, that there's no one true supreme. We're talking about people that, that thinks there's hundreds of gods. That they're able to tap into the spiritual part of it and do these enchantments and these, and these magical things to make all these things happen. And they see this and they see what's happening. They said, Pharaoh, we never seen nothing like this. This, this is the finger of God. Like that's, that's pretty... I don't think, it, like, it don't seem like that big a deal. But if you, that, that's a miracle in itself. That these people who's been raised this way their whole life, their their minds have been changed on that there is a God. But we see the evilness, and we see the hardened heart of Pharaoh here. And he, he said his heart was hardened. He was not moved by it. And he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Pharaoh's in a bad spot. He's in a bad spot. So we see the plague of the frogs. We see the plague of the lice. Any, any questions or comments on the plague of the lice? Alright, verse number 20. The Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and lo, he cometh forth from the water, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. So there we talked about it last week, how Moses went, we were talking about it after service, how Moses went down there, his life, he had a conversation. How do you think his conversation went? He's done got the bluff on him a little bit. You know what I mean? His confidence, I'm, I'm sure Moses and Aaron's confidence is out the roof. Which is, it's, a, it's good to have confidence in God. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't walk around so limp wristed a lot of times. We should know that we got we, we serve a God that is almighty and is capable. Amen. 
The Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning, stand before Pharaoh, and lo, he cometh forth to the water, and saith to him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. I bet Moses comes up there to him with a smirk on his face and, and just glad to be here. Yeah, what, what are you thinking, Pharaoh? What, what now? You know? When are you going to let my people go? I bet it was a little bit more sarcastic than let my people go. You know what I mean? <laughs> At what point are you going get to the, get the vibe here, you know? He said, Else, if thou will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy house, and the houses of, into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. I love summertime. Anybody else love summertime? I love the plains of summer. I love homemade ice cream and swimming and fishing. <coughs> I like my kids being home. But about July the 25th, I'm saying, like, when school start back, y'all know what I mean? I, can you hear me in there? I love summer. But one of the things I hate about summer is flies. Flies. I love to bow hunt. And we talked about that in there, but bow season happens like in Alabama, I guess October is supposed to be like the start of fall, right? But in Alabama, it's still the middle of summer sometimes. And the worst thing to be is in a tree stand. And then flies and mosquitoes start swarming around your head. You're trying to be still. And you have and, and swat. You know, it, it's just, I, I can't stand flies. Now, I'll, I've got childhood memories that, that are just braided into my head. Of grandma, uh, Nana saying, shut the door, you're letting the flies in. Y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, how mean is she? Like, and now when the kids go outside and leave the door, I say, shut the door, you're letting the flies in. And swarms of flies. Like, who likes that? Nobody does. Build you some chicken houses and see how you like it. flies everywhere at the house. Okay? Uh, but he said, hey, he said, let people go. If you don't, there's going to be flies coming up everywhere. Like, there's going to be flies in your house. There's going to be flies uh, of all the Egyptians. Swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day, separate in that day, divide in that day, the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, and no swarms of flies shall be there. And to the end thou knowest, may, mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of of the earth. So up until this point, we must understand that even the Israelites have been experiencing the inconveniences of the plagues. Okay? They had to deal with the blood. They had to deal with the lies. They've had to deal with the, with the frogs. They've had, but God says at this point, I'm, I'm going to divide. I'm going to prove to you that I am God of the earth. The flies, I got to look it up uh, it says most probably what was the fly then was, was a beetle. And it was sacred to the sun god that they called Ra. And, and so they were sacred. So just like the frogs were sacred, we can't do nothing with the frogs. We can't do nothing with the fly. Well, no flies water. Pam, I'm talking about a fly. Flies water ain't for flies, is it, Pam? It's for little kids' legs and when they don't act right. Not near enough people laugh today. Y'all got bad memories of flies water, don't you? You just have uh, that. <laughs> she can't catch it. She'll put a contract out on it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so these beetles, they, they were sacred. Uh, sacred to this sun god, right? Well, he, he inflicts the pain of this deity once again. Makes, the, makes it a curse to him. And he tells him, he said, I'm going to put a divide. Do you remember early or later in the book of Genesis when Joseph and, and his brothers come back? Y'all remember the story? His brothers come back. And, and he asked Pharaoh at the time, he said, look, I want a place for, for me and my family to dwell and to live. And remember what Pharaoh told him? Where did Pharaoh give him? Anybody remember? Hint, it's right there in verse number uh, 22. Goshen. Goshen. That's where, that, that was some of the choicest land in all of Egypt. And, and, and Pharaoh said, I want you to, you and your family, because remember Joseph, he was a big deal, Right? And he had helped them get out of a famine and all that. And he said, I'm going to give you and your family the land of Goshen. So apparently that's still where the Israelites were living. And he said, I'm going to put a divide. These swarms of flies, they're going to eat the Egyptians up. But as for my people, the ones that I'm trying to get delivered out of here, the ones that I'm trying to let you let them go so they, they can go sacrifice and worship me, they're not going to be hurt by, this, by the uh, 
by this plague. He said, I will divide in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no storms of flies shall be there to the end. Thou may knowest that, uh, that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. I just had a revelation. If I ever build more chicken houses, I'm going to name it Goshen Farm. <laughs> what do you think there? Don't know? I don't know. Anyway. I'll put a division, verse 23, between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. As I read these things and I thought about these things and how that everybody's having to deal with this judgment, I kind of got to thinking about how it is today. And all the evil, and, and, and I don't know if y'all can see it, and, and, and I, try to be, I'm, I'm, I try to be optimistic. I try to have a positive outlook on everything. But the more time and time goes on and we see the things happen in our country, I believe we're beginning to see judgment happen in our country. Amen. The things that's going on. And just, just the times that we're in, I believe that. I don't want to think that, but, but as you look and if you read Scripture and how things are going to go and how the nations have done like we're doing, living totally contrary to the Word of God, like ruin has always happened. And guess what? we got to experience judgment with everybody else. These righteous people there, they were righteous people in Goshen, uh, the Israelites, but they were having experienced the same judgment that others face. But there comes a point that it does not happen anymore. I'm thankful. And I've said it a million times, but there's coming a day that this old world's going to fade away and we're going to rise above it. Amen. We're going to have eternal rest and eternal home where there is no judgment, there is no pain, there is no heartache, there is no struggle. We've got that promise to us. They're having to dwell in the, in, in the judgment until this plague right here. Verse 24, The Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarms of flies. Nasty, just nasty swarms of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moses. Like my, Pharaoh's not really been freaked out that much yet until now. And like when all this happened, he said, look, he called for Moses. Listen to what he says. And for Aaron, he said, go ye sacrifice to your God in the land. He said, hey, I tell you what, y'all go sacrifice. But here's the deal that he tells them. He says, I want you to go sacrifice where? In the land. Pharaoh tries to make a compromise with the children of Israel. What was the original deal? Do y'all remember? The original deal was what? Let us go sacrifice. Three days. Take a three-day journey out into the wilderness, and we'll go sacrifice, and we'll come back. Pharaoh says, I'll tell you what, I'm tired of the plagues, I'm tired of the flies, I'm tired of the frog, I'm tired of the blood, I'm tired of it all. Y'all go sacrifice, but make sure you stay in the land. He tried to make a compromise with it. Tried to make a compromise with it. As I read that, I got to thinking. I think that's how the devil tries to do a lot of us Christians a lot of times. Amen. He tries to let us make a compromise. You serve God on Sunday and just a little bit, but you make sure that you stay in the land. Make sure you stay in the Word. Make sure that you have no influence outside of the church. Don't compromise. There's enough folks and enough churches that are living a compromised life. That if you see them Monday through Saturday, they look nothing like the church is supposed to look. They're living where they're, 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 they're serving God on Sunday, but they're still in the land. They're in the Word. No, we shouldn't make a compromise with the things of the Word. Moses tells him this. Moses said, It's not good for us to do so, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and they will or, and they will stone us. So Moses said, Look, we do that. Everything that we worship and how we worship and what we do is totally against Egyptian protocol and, and culture. They're going to stone us if we do. I wish Moses would have just said, Hey, we ain't going to do it. We're going to the wilderness like God said. He tries to make an excuse about it. He says we're not going to do it. Then he tries to do it again. We'll go a three-day journey in the wilderness, sacrifice to God as he has commanded us. He does say that after he tries to butter it up. Pharaoh said, I'll let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away and treat for me. And so Pharaoh tries to make another compromise with him. I tell you what, you go, but don't get too far away from the land. Don't go, don't go very far out there. 
Don't get too deep with God. Don't get too uh, tied up with God that you quit living for him. Don't get too tied in with God that you quit listening to your music that you shouldn't be listening to. Don't get too deep with God that the things on TV, uh, they're, they're pretty rough at the house. We're going to leave those on there. Don't get too deep with God that the influence that you have at your job just ain't real good. See, it's a compromise. And as I read the boy, you're talking about conviction. How many times do we compromise our faith? When we go to work, when we go to school, even in our homes, when do we compromise our faith? Moses said, Behold, I'll go out from thee. I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh and from his servants and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more and not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. <clears throat> Moses said, okay, but don't, don't start your junk again. You say you're going to let us go, you're going to let us go this time. The Lord did according to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh and from his servants and from his people. There remained not one. And who would have thought it? Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Neither would he let the people go. And again, God gives him gave him another chance to repent. <laughs> God gave him another chance to let the people go. And he didn't do it. Every time his heart was hardened to the things of God. And they were not released. And they were not released. Things that stuck out to me. This chapter was the compromise. That that really that really hit me pretty hard. How are we are, are we are we serving God but staying in the land? Are we letting the worldly things have its way in our life? I think I think every one of us in here is guilty of it. Let's just let's just be honest. We are. We let love, we let our emotions get the best of us. We say things we shouldn't. My wife, I don't know what the deal was yesterday. She cooked the best supper that I've had in a long time. She baked, I thought it was Thanksgiving. She baked the ham, and made dressing, boiled cabbage, mashed potatoes, peas. I can't even remember. I don't know what I did, but I don't know what she wants. How about that? That's better. <laughs> and, and Jack and Sydney had went home with, uh, with her mom. They wanted to go home. She said, I'll come get them a little bit. And uh, so it was just me and Darby and, and Ray. And like, we would normally eat around the table like they show you on them commercials that you're supposed to do. I said, why don't we get a TV tray and watch baseball while we eat supper tonight? So we, we prayed. We, we got our tray. I set my tray down. I had my plate. My dad had called while I'm toting my, toting my plate to my TV tray. And I set my TV tray, and I don't sit it far enough on the thing, and it starts to slide off. I'm talking about it looks like Thanksgiving, like, rounded over. I'm on the phone, I see it start sliding, and I, and I just can't do nothing, and I, and I try to kick it with my foot. And the next thing I know, that plate is face down on the rug in the living room. And before I know it, I done compromised two or three times. Let the emotions get the best of me. Flew, I, just, I just lost, you know what I mean? Like what I done, I called my thing, and my, myself a dumb, I, things that I shouldn't. I, I just, and I got to thinking after that happened, I was like, why? Do we act like it? Why are we? Why are we so? Why do we run to sin so fast? Amen. Like, why is that? Why is that nature to us? You know what I mean? Like, why? Like, I've been saved for. I saved my seven. I'm that's twenty three years, right? What, what, what this process of sanctification that they're talking? This process of becoming more like Jesus? Like, I don't know. It may have stopped two or three years ago. Like. Like, why am I not, am I the only one in here that feels like that? Like, why do, why do we struggle so much? Why do we compromise? I think a lot of times why we compromise and why we struggle is because of the junk that we let into our ears and into our eyes. Because so many times what you let in is what's going to come out. You put junk in, junk's going to come out. You put hatred in, you put bitterness in, you put... Dirty words in, you put whatever in, guess what? Before long, it's going to come out. Don't compromise with this word. Don't compromise with the devil. And so many times we do. We compromise with it. 
And I, I, I and, and I, I was just disgusted at myself. I, I, I finished eating. I went in there and prayed. I said, Lord, you don't have to help me. Forgive me uh, for struggling with, with, with acting stupid. You know what I mean? I want to be better. I want to quit compromising with the world. I don't want to stay in the land. I want to get out there and I want to get out there in the wilderness. I want the deep things of God in my life. Amen. We got to start putting better things in before we get better things out. Amen. Don't compromise. <laughs> One of the other big things that stuck out to me is the fact that the children of Israel had to endure the, the judgment that the Egyptians were having to endure. We, we talked about this a hundred times as well. Bad things happen in your life sometimes because of what? God allows them to? Because of dumb things that we do or because of dumb things somebody else does. And you have to endure uh, negative consequences in your life because of stuff, stupid stuff to other people. did get a little better towards God when they had to build more blocks up. cost him a whole lot at the end. And I don't know that that's not the same fact that takes away to this world. Each and everything that is put before God to be one by one destroyed or redeemed yep. for the folly that it is. Mm -hmm. And that may be right around the corner for us. Yep. You're right. You're right. Anybody else tonight? May have stood out to you.
that thought, like, and maybe not even just your kids, but like those that are close. Why is it that we'll hurt the ones that's closest to us first before we? You know what I mean? Like, I, I know exactly where you're coming from. Self forgiveness. we're in confession time in here, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, and everybody's got kids in here knows how kids are nowadays, can I play with you phone, can I play with you phone, and, and that's, that's just the time we're living in, and, and our deal pretty much is when it gets dark, you can play Xbox, or you can play, play on the phone, or whatever, but uh, until then, no, and, and I, I, I count on, I count on both hands, times that Raiden has been over there and I say, hey, put the phone up while I'm sitting there holding my phone. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it goes back to a lot we talked about Sunday night, about we're, we hold so many times other folks to a lot higher measure than we hold ourselves. Amen. Standards, you know what I mean? Amen. And uh, anyways, I'm like Charlie. I, I've got to get better. And uh, Y'all pray for me. I want to play the best example I can for my kids, for y'all, uh, for the community. Anybody else tonight?
already over here, not only for me and my family, for everyone is here today. Amen. Anybody else tonight? It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. 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 Thankful for, for him, his presence, his goodness. Thankful for his people. Never ceases to amaze me how we can read and study stories that happened thousands of years ago and it'll touch us like it happened just yesterday. Amen. God's Word is alive. Amen. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. I'm thankful for it. All right, I'm going to pray and then uh, we'll be this man. Don't forget uh, the shirt, sign up sheet back there. Um, any other announcements? services Sunday. Brother David, ordination service will be this coming Sunday night. Amen. So uh, y'all pray for the church. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all, y'all pray for, for him and Pam and thankful uh, for them and do uh, do pray for them. Pray for the church that, that y'all do something great through his, his ministry here. So. Uh, but that'll be, uh, that'll be Sunday night. So. And then Brother John will be the following Sunday. A lot of exciting things happening, amen? Amen. So, all right, we'll have a word of prayer, and uh, we'll be dismissed. Father, God, we come to you tonight again, God, just thanking you for a day that, uh, that, that you blessed us with, Father. God, you've been so, so, so good to us. And God, we just praise you tonight for that, Father. God, we thank you for the word. Uh, God, is forever settled in heaven. God, we thank you for the word. It's alive, and it is well. God, is still touching folks' hearts. And, oh, God, I pray that we would take the word. God, we would God, we'd apply it to our lives. God, I pray that the things that we that, that we talk about here and, God, that we study here and that we, that we hear other folks say, oh, God, I pray that you would, God, that we wouldn't leave here and forget about it. God, we wouldn't leave here and put it on the back shelf and, and, and not, not get it off till Sunday, God. But I pray that it would stay fresh on our hearts and fresh on our minds, oh, God. God, I pray that you would challenge us each day with your word. God, each day with your presence, God, help us as we, as many of us have said in here tonight, God, help us to be better for you. God, we want to be better for our families. We want to be better for our communities, oh God, but, but I pray that we would have a desire, God, to first be better for you. God, you've been so good to us, and God, I pray your, your word tells us, God, that, that uh, God, it's just our reasonable service, God, to, to, to be a sacrifice to you. So God, help us to be better for you. God, help us to, when the times of, of temptation and, and trial come. Well, help, God, help us to stand firm. God, help us to, to live a patient life. God, help us to live a life, God, that's pleasing unto you. And, God, I pray that you would just bless tonight. God, I pray for each one that's in here. Oh, God, I pray for their families. I pray for the lives that they live, the examples that they are. Oh, God, I pray that you would touch them and bless them. Oh, God, I pray that, that we would be able to witness the, 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 the act of sanctification happening in each person in here, oh, God. God, I pray that you would help us to grow in your word. Help us to grow in your spirit, God. And God, I pray that you would just use this church in a mighty, mighty way. But God, as we've talked about it so many times, and as we see in Scripture so many times, oh God, God, before you do something great, God, the sin must get out. So God, I pray that you would help us to purify ourselves. God, so we may do a great thing for you. God, again, we thank you for, again, for all that you've done. God, thank you for each one that's here. God, I pray that you would just bless them, keep them safe, bring us back Sunday. God, prepare our hearts to worship on Sunday. It's in Christ's name that I pray. And all God's children say.